I never start off with the idea of making a, a very large sculpture. It's a relationship, like a body relationship. And so you start doing scale, and, and by the time you get to the point where you think it's really right, you look at it and it's 40 feet. And you're like, oh, great, it's 40 feet tall. I wasn't planning on making a 40 foot tall sculpture. My name is Michael Christian, and I live in Oakland, California. The current sculpture I'm working on is called Home. It's a piece that's commissioned by the Burning Man Festival. Their theme being the city, metropolis. It's distilling it down to the basic elements of what people can always identify with in the city, and that's maps. So I'm just making a 12, 13 foot tall globe that's made completely of overlaying maps, layered and layered and layered. Initially, I wanted all of the streets to be recognizable and to have them connect. Then as you get through the process of actually being able to make it and bend steel and make them all fit, you realize that that's probably impractical. I don't really have a, a thematic wellspring I go to that is consistent. I'm trying to focus on universal themes or ideas that other people can relate to in that experience. For a while, I designed a lot of sculptures that incorporated climbing, where you could actually interact with the piece. For me personally, I really just wanted more dance, joy, laughter, more in the moment and not as cerebral. A lot of these pieces I built maybe what you would say halfway. I built a structure or a platform for people to bring their own energy into it. A lot of these large sculptures we can install in a day, take it down in a day, and then pick it up and take it somewhere else. There's a lot of sculptors here locally that created this methodology of building things transportable. It's nothing new, but it's through a mentality of building it quick and modular that has created opportunities that weren't available to me before. Figuring out how you're gonna do it always takes longer than actually doing something. You have to design it with transport in mind. It'll fit on a truck, it fits in dimensions of a container. You can have 70 different parts that have to break down and put back together again, so it can get complicated. Some of these works I have have traveled 10, 12 different cities across the country. And that's what it's all about for me when creating something is to share with as many people as possible. We began the home project about a couple of months ago. I thought that would be enough time, but it's proving not to be true as we have a little over two weeks and we probably need a little over three weeks as we get towards the crunch. Initially, I was going to have eight, 10 layers. Now we're at five, six, four. <laughs> it changes all the time. For me, building it is the only way to really see how it feels and what it looks like. It's just like conceptually different from, hey, let's have all the maps connected as one big map and we'll have labeled cities. Oh, you streets. mean it's changing? <laughs> really? When you're trying something new, some days are good, some days are not so good. And I think the not so good days on this project have been piling up. There's a lot of space in Oakland, a lot of large empty industrial spaces that allow you to build these large things. And so there's a whole warehouse community that's sprouted up. In order to engineer and design and build transport, it really helps to have a community of peers that are doing the same thing and enjoy sharing as well. And there are quite a few talented people that have nestled in here, so I'm, I feel fortunate. Collaborative process is an interesting one. It's kind of like turning up the music and dancing in your room by yourself. A lot of fun. Dancing with a lot of your friends in public, a lot of fun. They're a lot different. Working with other people, sometimes it can be challenging because you know where it needs to go. 
and when it's not going there, then you have to reel it back in. Like where the wires are going to come out, are they going to come out the bottom or the side or what? We have to know that. Especially working with super talented people that do it on their own, and you have to kind of convince them that the way that you want to do it is the right way. I've had that experience where I really am faced with the reality of where the piece is going and where I wanted it to go. It's like a quarter inch different. And then I confront that and go, wow, I really don't have control over anything. Inevitably, if you let it go where it's supposed to go and guide it as best you can, we usually get to the location in a place where I didn't know existed. And that is exciting. Once you finish a sculpture, you have to walk away. I've sold pieces that weren't, I thought, finished, but it didn't matter to the people who were buying them because they're happy. It becomes other people's art at that point, and I'm generally moving on to the next thing I need to do. There's only a few pieces where I've actually sat down at the piece in a lawn chair or something and had a beer or just been like, wow, I'm done. Most often, we're so exhausted, you just want to lay down, and you're delirious and incomprehensible. I don't have immediate plans for the piece after Burning Man, but I have a feeling this will find a home. I'm sure I'll install this around for a while. I like it, and it's accessible to people, and it's pretty. So it will, it will find a home eventually, and it's small, so I can store it. Uh, relatively small. <laughs> Small-ish.